Junior Jean, welcome to the stream. <laughs> Kind of tricky. I need to. It's the very first time that I've ever done this, so I need to uh, try and keep my eyes on a couple of things and uh, make sure that uh, yeah, make sure that I <laughs> know what I'm doing and that my audio is good. Can you hear me, by the way? Well, I don't know how many people are going to join. I, I, I can't imagine a ton of people since this is a... Uh... Hey, hey, Nate, how are you doing? Good to see you. Max, awesome. All the people are here. <laughs> so, um, yeah, to, like, I've been hacking on a little project since last night, and... Uh, yeah, basically, I've got this. Um, I've got this bus pirate device. I'm going to be holding it up. Hopefully, you can see something of it. The camera is always crap to um, kind of do autofocus. And basically, this um, this device. Maybe I can just find it on the, on the web. Bus pirate. Um, it's a it's a tool to. Um, uh, it's a tool to uh, connect to a bunch of like different protocols. So it's uh, you plug in USB, and your computer can just talk directly to this thing over serial, and uh, and it allows you to connect to SPI devices, I squared C, uh, like one wire, like bit bang mode. So you just like turn pins on and off. Um, it's also got like some level of JTAG support, so you could do JTAG, but that's mostly for uh, debugging. But uh, yeah, so this is the bus pirate. It's about thirty euros. Like I, yeah, I found it in in various places. Um, it's somewhere between twenty and thirty. Uh... Oh yes, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I, I was uh, I was intending to show the the browser, and I realised that I just had the code open. Uh, st still, one hundred percent due to the the streaming thing here. Um, so this is the bus pirate. Uh, there's been a couple of different revisions of it. Um, the one that I'm showing on screen is the one that I have. is the three point six. There is like a version four, which, um, as I understand it, is kind of like. Uh, when I was looking it up, it was basic. The person was basically saying, "Hey, don't buy this one. It's not as well supported or documented or anything. Just get the 3.6." And uh, yeah, so it's um, it's this really useful little device. It's actually really small. Like I expected it to be a bit bigger, but it's you know, it's you can see how it is uh, in relation to my hand there. And uh, yeah, so what I'm actually doing is I'm adding like uh, JavaScript slash TypeScript support to be able to interact with this thing programmatically. Hey Tim, nice to see you, thanks for joining. Um, yeah, we're doing some, uh, we're doing some bus pirate hacking, some bus piracy, you could say. Um, alright, so yeah, uh, this is the device, and uh, it connects up, it's got one of these like old school uh, mini USB ports on it, not even a micro USB. Um, and yeah, so I'll, I'll zip over to the code. Um, is the code kind of a good size? Is this visible? I can uh, I can bump the the size up a bit as well, if need be. Um, yeah, let me see if I can uh, if I can bump the mic up a bit. moved it a little bit closer, but that might not be enough. Uh, audio capture... Oh yeah, I know why. It doesn't have any gain. 
Let me move it back a bit. Sorry if that's too much. That might be too much. Is that, is that a little better, or is that too much? I'll, I'll go ahead as if that might be okay. I know that that's it's crossing a bit into the red there, so I'll leave it. I'll leave it as is. Um, you should get the same settings. Yeah, it's clipping indeed. No worries. Take that down a bit. And uh, yeah, hopefully that's a bit better. Anyway, that'll have to do. Uh, because I'm only gonna I'm only gonna go for about one hour, I think. Uh, yeah, uh, any more than that, I'll I'll, uh, I'll I'll lose focus. It's been also a long day today. All right, so um, so this is the code, and uh, I don't have that much of it so far. And yeah, so what I'm doing basically, this device is like kind of Swiss Army knife. Um, it's like you can. Take uh, take any of these like little hardware devices. Like, let me find something around. Yeah, something like this. Like, I don't know. I've got this uh, this little um, OLED screen here, and this is uh, an SPI device. So, what that means is that if you're going to put this on an Arduino or something, um, you would hook up some of these pins to the SPI lines, and then the Arduino can talk to devices on that bus. And you can hook up numerous devices um, onto these buses. And you also have like I squared C, which is another type of bus, um, which is which just uses like a different number of wires and has a different protocol that underlines it. Fundamentally, all it is is like reliably sending bytes from one place to another and being able to get a response. Um, uh, the big difference between like SPI and I squared C is that SPI is um, is like double data rate. So like when you're sending, you're also receiving. And with I squared C, you have to alternate. It's kind of um, half duplex. You have to like send stuff and then you can receive stuff. Um, yeah. So the bus pirate it supports a bunch of stuff. It's got a bit bang mode, and bit bang is where you just like you control the pins. You just like uh, you know raise the voltage level on the pins up and down and then you you know you get like seven pins to control on this so you can control seven pins simultaneously turn them on and off and yeah you can like manually do a lot of protocols that way right you're just sending data SPI I squared C as mentioned UART which is just serial port uh, standard stuff like basically terminal text sending text back and forth just bytes again but this is one way it's two way but one, one device to one device point to point you have one wire which is this you know crazy protocol where you send stuff over one wire unclocked it's uh, it's pretty cool it's self clocking you have raw wire i'm not even sure what that is actually and uh yeah so what i'm doing here is i'm building a couple of classes um building a couple of classes and you kind of use them like this. So here I make this um, SPI mode class. I feed it a bunch of stuff. So this is like the, um, you know, when I plug this device in, it appears um, on this path in Linux, right? Dev TTY USB 0. Um, you have to pass it kind of a few different options related to like the protocol itself. So in this case, a bunch of stuff to do with the clock and how the data goes out according to the clock. Um, this is kind of verbose at the moment, like uh, these are kind of, these are the default settings and probably they should just, they should just be there by default, you shouldn't have to provide them unless you want to change them. And uh, yeah, we get speed. Um, and there are various speeds, so, um, you know, I hope this is visible actually, I don't know if these like inner windows show up. Um, so yeah, this has like, a, uh, like it can run up to 30, what is it, how was the highest megahertz it runs up to? Uh, 8 megahertz. So you can do 8 megahertz uh, speed transfer, which is pretty pretty decent for, for this, um, over serial port anyway. Like the serial port is slower than that, so it's, um, yeah, but you can queue data up. So you can do this to talk to different kinds of devices. Um, cool, cool, yeah, I see now that it's visible indeed.
Um, so this one, what did that start out as? It starts out as like pretty low kilohertz. Um, yep. And then you have to init the device. Everything I've done here is um, I'm doing it all with uh, async await, so everything is promise based. It just makes it a nicer API. Um, there is an underlying serial port. It's the only library I'm using. It's the serial port library from Node. And uh, this one has, a, for me, it has a little bit of a frustrating interface. It's got like the classic interface from back in the day of Node, which was, uh, you know, uh, using streams. Um, which is, you know, they're not, it's not a bad interface, but it's kind of clunky for a bunch of stuff. And now with everything, so much infrastructure around promises, um, with so much inf infrastructure around promises, it's kind of not that nice to interface with a, with a stream API, but to try and be building a promise-based API. So I just want to show first what I've done with like the basis of this, like how it um, connects to the serial port. So this is the, the abstract base class. Uh, <laughs> it's always fun to say. Uh, so this basically is a, a base class that um, underlines the bus pirate. Uh, for every different mode, for every different kind of protocol that this can speak, um, we're going to implement a different class. Um, and they all share some stuff. So basically they all share the fact that there is this a buffer where data that comes in gets sort of gets queued up into. Um, they all have a connection to the serial port object that's provided by that library. And basically we create the serial port. These are the, the settings that have to go for um, for the bus pirate, right? So it runs at this board rate, it's eight data bits, no parity bit, one stop bit, the standard UART stuff. And when we get data in, uh, we shove it into this Rx buffer. So, uh, yeah, data comes in, we put it in the Rx buffer, and that way we can actually pull it out when we need to, rather than like receiving it in this streamed way. So we can pull it rather than being pushed it. Uh, when we in it, uh, yeah, this was one. This is one place yesterday where I, I had to Google something, and I was like, I don't even know if Node has this, but it doesn't. Of course, it doesn't really make that much sense. But I, I kind of wanted to make an async constructor, uh, but there, there is no such thing. So what we actually have to do is to set the serial port up first, add the event, and then there's an init uh, method that you run, which opens the serial port, which is basically, you know, establish the connection with the thing. Uh, think something could go wrong at that moment, so we could, we could throw an error there, or like reject a promise, because this uh, is a promise. And then when we've opened the serial port, we enter uh, the so-called bit bang mode. Um, I think it's useful to just show what happens when you, like how you're supposed to interact with this device or how like the standard, the standard way is. So I'm, I've plugged it in. There's not much to see. <laughs> it's just an LED. Um, a couple more LEDs will light up on that uh, in a minute. Um, so the way I'm meant to use this uh, try and make some room on the terminal. The way you're meant to use this is uh, you're meant to connect to it like over the serial port. So I've got screen here, so just run screen. And when you do that, um, like you can press question mark and you get this like this sort of old school terminal based uh, input. Um, so yeah, you get like, uh, it gives you all these options of things you can do, like all the different commands, and it's like this crazy, like, you can never remember all of these things, or maybe if you work with this device for years you can do it, but there's so many possible options. So for instance, we can reset the device with hash, um, we do a reset, it shows some information about the bootloader and the device ID, so such, it shows that dangerousprototypes.com uh, manufactured and designed the device, shout out to those. Um, and we can, for instance, like go into a particular mode. So if you press M, you can go into a mode. You get a menu, like, okay, which mode do you want to go into? And there's a bunch of stuff. So there's like, 
this high Z mode, that's just like um, high impedance, it means none of the pins are connected, nothing's happening, it's not doing anything exciting. And we could, for instance, go to SPI mode by pressing 5, we can choose our speed here. Um, so, yeah, let's say uh, 30 kilohertz. Uh, we can choose our clock polarity, and this hasn't a default, as you can see, right? Uh, let's go ahead, give the default. Clock edge, so that's basically when we're um, sending data. Uh, you know, do we send data when the clock goes from, uh, from low to high, or do we send it when it goes from low, uh, high to low? So the default for that. Input, input, uh, input sample phase. Uh, so when, like, when we're looking at the clock waveform, and like, uh, I hope you know what some of this means because uh, I'm probably not going to go too deep into the the clocking of data and stuff. But basically, like, you know, when uh, when you're sending data bit by bit, uh, you're sending a one or a zero. You have to send that according to a clock. Uh, so when the clock goes high, you've got data on the line as well. And what you're what you're saying here when you input sample is, do I take it in the middle of the clock period, or do I take it at the end, or you kind of make a decision about that. And usually, like, like the description of how this should be done is going to be, like, it might be device-specific. I mean, it's relatively standard, but uh, you'll find it in the peripheral data sheet. So in relation to the screen, for instance, um, you would find in the data sheet, you know, how you have to interact with this over SPI. Um, output type, open drain, uh, or normal. Yeah, it's a bit of a tricky thing <laughs> to explain, but uh, or for me at least, because I'm not an expert, but yeah, it's basically like, do you use high impedance to indicate that there is a, a high, or do you use a, 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 like a high voltage level? Um, all right, so now we're in SPI mode, so we can just do SPI things. Um, and you can see there's another LED on the thing now. And uh, yeah, so basically what I wanted to really show with this, um, is this is how you kind of, um, oh, I have no idea, something wrong with the audio and like reverse stereo polarity, I have no idea, I'm <laughs> uh, is it possible that I somehow left uh, something on, no, I'm sorry, if the audio is bad, I'm, I, I don't think there's anything I'll be able to do about it, so I, I hope you can, uh, I hope you can live with it. Um, yeah, so if the, like, in this mode, like, this is just, uh, we could write a driver for this thing, like, a, like, for the library, which would basically do all of this kind of stuff. It would understand the menu structure of the bus pirate, and, uh, it would know what all of these different commands mean, and when you're in every different type, you know, you have different, uh, commands you can send, but actually that is, um, that's kind of not the best way to do it, because, yeah, you have to kind of understand the, the menu structure of the device and everything, and that's very much a human interface. It's not very good for a, for a like, a machine-driven interface. But luckily for us, um, the, uh, the, the designers of the, the uh, bus buyer had, you know, some foresight, and, uh, yeah, they built in, um, I'll pump this up a bit, they built in a, uh, well, they call it the bitbang mode, but um, I don't know if it's, uh, or the, it's the binary I.O. library, or I'm not exactly sure what they call that. The bitbang protocol. Uh, yeah, it's kind of fun. So if you send the zero byte in the user terminal, maximum, it's actually not maximum, it's minimum, but it says that somewhere else, 20 times, uh, you can enter the raw binary bitbang mode. And in this mode, um, like all of those crazy commands and all of those menu levels and all of that kind of stuff uh, gets kind of collapsed into like single byte commands. So, for example, once you're in, um, once you're in this mode, if you send zero, it will just kind of reset the device into um, into bitbang IO mode and it will send you this string, BBIO. Uh, and then if you enter like the, the kind of a, a bunch of stuff here, like one, two, 
3, 4, etc. You'll enter the various different modes like SPY, I2C, UR, etc. There's also a JTAG mode, um, it's the Open OCD JTAG, so it's for doing debugging over JTAG. Um, and this says documented in the source only, so it's not really for, for now. I'll dive into that at some point. Um, there is actually another library for Node. I, I did find that someone has like sort of begun the process of this, but uh, from what I could see, it was like um, it didn't have a lot of support. It didn't do a lot of the different things, and I'm not even sure if it uses this binary mode. So uh, what I wanted to do with this is basically make a nice, useful API and uh, and try it out like that. Um, yeah. So what I think we're going to do now. And uh, is is try to implement this um, this this bit bang mode, um, and in that mode, um, for instance, we could do the self tests. Uh, take a look at that maybe, but I think most of the other ones are a little bit more interesting. Like for instance, set up pulse width modulation, um, so we can configure and enable po pulse width modulation output on the auxiliary pin. It requires five bytes to set up. Um, it responds with a 1 after the sequence is complete. And PWM remains active after leaving bitbang mode. Yeah, so this device is a little bit tricky in that um, if you kind of like leave the device on and connect to it, there's no real way of knowing kind of where you are or what the state of the device is. You can't really query for that. Um, Alright, so we'll get back to the specifics of this. The way this is implemented we do the serial thing, we sort of connect the serial port, and we enter bitbang mode. And the first thing we do is clear the Rx buffer. That is in case there's already something in there for some reason. Like the device has sent us information as soon as we connected. Uh, then I have some logic for trying to determine if we have the device open or not. I won't go into that now. But otherwise, we do this thing where we send 20 null bytes. So this SP, that's the serial port object, we can write to it. We write an array of numbers, and we generate the array, it's just 20 uh, null bytes. So we send that. And because this is you know, real hardware, and it's slow because it's going over a serial port, and because the code is relatively fast, uh, I mean, it's like we're, we're running uh, an interpreted uh, language here, but obviously it's still quite a lot faster than a serial port. So we actually have to wait. Like, the, the data is not just going to be there on the next uh, statement. So we actually have to wait for a bit. And for that, there is this convenient method, uh, convenience method called wait for bytes available. So if we go to wait, wait for bytes available, uh, we can provide a timeout, because you don't want this to loop infinitely forever, that would be pretty bad. Um, so what we do, we flush, I actually don't know if I need that here, I think this was a piece of debugging, but uh, I'm, I don't know, I'm not going to remove it for now. Um, we count how long we've been waiting for, and then we just go into a while loop where we check if we have enough bytes in the buffer. If we do, then we return. We're not trying to get the bytes out of the buffer, we're just checking that we have enough. Um, if we've waited an equal number of milliseconds to our um, wait time, then we, well, I'm dumping the Rx buffer at that point, but also throwing an error. And otherwise, we just delay for that number of milliseconds. Um, I'm actually delaying for the wrong number of milliseconds there, I think. Uh, doing, yeah, I'm just going to set it to 10 for now, because this is a little bit too high. I think that's at 100 now. Um, and then we increment weighted, um, which we probably increment weighted by 10, finding the bugs. Uh, yeah, that's how that works basically. So we're actually just waiting until the buffer gets filled. Um, and uh, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So we wait for that. And then we know that it should send us back some data. So if we look in, the, in the, uh, this documentation here, like, when you enter this uh, thing, it tells us, well, it actually says it here, it returns this BBIO1. So we want five characters back, um, and yeah, so we get a response, we do an Rx read string, five, um, 
It's actually a synchronous method, so we don't need to await there. But, um, so rx read string basically does an rx read and then does to string, and then rx read uh, it returns null if there aren't enough bytes. That's why you have to kind of check check the byte buffer first and then read, um, because I thought it would be less convenient to. If you have to know that you have to wait anyway, it wouldn't be super convenient to also throw errors here. I just thought it would be a simpler API, but maybe I'll change that. Maybe we'll also throw errors if you can't read the number of bytes. Um, then we just slice them out, and then we reduce the size of the buffer by that many bytes, right? Take them out, because we've read them now, and return them. And what we can actually do at that point is check if we got the string, um, and it's like a mode response bitbang mode. So if we didn't get it, then we just error out, say that we expected it, didn't get it, this is what we got instead. We give the device some time, clear the buffer, because as you need to send uh, this thing at least 20 times, um, it can be the case that uh, like, if there was something there before, it might end up sending you that EBIO1 message a couple of times. So at that point, just wait, let it send, and uh, clear them out. And that's how we get into bitbang mode. And then once we're in bitbang mode, um, going to SPI mode or something like that, that's just sending that command, right? That's sending the number one and it checking for the acknowledgement and so on. So in bitbang mode, this is actually kind of where we want to start extending things. Uh, not in the bus pirate base, but in this empty class here. So, what kind of stuff can we do in bitbang mode? Um, we can do this PWM, so we can select pulse width modulation. We can clear or disable pulse width modulation. We can take a voltage probe measurement. That's pretty interesting. So we get a 16-bit um, voltage probe. We need to do some... Um, uh, we need to do a little bit of uh, uh, math to work out kind of like what the what the value should be there in volts. Um, although we most of the time you sort of don't care about the actual like voltage level, you just want to like know the relative like how it is in a relative 16-bit value. High 8 bits come first, which means it's a big endian. Um, we could do continuous voltage probe measurement, which means it's just going to send us <clears throat> it's going to send us two byte big ND and sixteen bit uh, va like measurements as quickly as the UART will allow for. Um, and how do we cancel that? Well, I don't see. You can do a frequency measurement on the auxiliary pin, so we can actually. Um, you can actually like pump, pump a signal into the auxiliary pin and uh, take frequency measurement based on that. Um, we can configure pins as input or output. I think probably this will do first because it's simple, easy to measure. Um, and we can set on or off. Oh, it's input and output and on or off and PWM computation. So these are the things like, uh, and we're not going to get to all of them, but these are the things that I want to uh, take a look into. So let's do um, what would be interesting. I have my oscilloscope running up here with the, uh, like, I've got the probes here, and just because I don't have a second camera or a <laughs> simple way to move the camera around, uh, I can't really show you the value, but I'm going to be able to see if it's working or not. Uh, which is at least useful. Um, I've also got my multimeter there just for looking at voltages. Um, let's do the take a voltage probe measurement. Yeah, I think that's a nice one. So basically, if we send this value in, uh, in binary, um, then we'll, it will take a voltage measurement, return a 2 byte ADC reading. So it should be pretty straightforward to try that out. Let's do it. Check in with the chat. See if I've missed anything. Don't think so. All right. So, um, uh, that's right. Um, get um, read ADC. 
Not sure of the best naming at the moment. Read ADC. Read ADC 16. I don't know, something like that. Um, so, uh, for us to do this, um, what is the... Is this in uh, 20, so 14 hex? So we need to send over the serial port one byte which is just OX14. So that's going to be uh, OX416 EDC measurements. And then uh, we can await this dot, uh, wait for bytes available of two. We need two bytes. And to get those two bytes, well, I haven't actually implemented like a read 16 yet. so. Since we know we need it, um, let's do that. Rx read u16, and we will return um, to our bytes will be this dot rx read 2. Oh no, that should be n. Oh no, it should be 2. We know we need 2. Um, uh, yeah, if we don't have any bytes, then we'll just return bytes, right? We got null, it's null. Let's be a bit more explicit. Um, and otherwise, what we're going to do is we're going to return uh, bytes, and then the first one is the high byte. So we'll take that, shift it up by 8, and the second one is the Oh boy. Cool. So now we've got to read 16. Um, my oscilloscope is like, uh, it's an embarrassingly cheap, uh, <laughs> like entry level thing I got from Amazon. It's a Hanmar Tech DOS1102. It advertises itself as a 110 megahertz um, scope, but yeah, I'm pretty sure you cannot accurately get up to that. I think it's more, I think it's can comfortably measure like 30, maybe 35 megahertz. Um, and then, yeah, you, you actually start bumping into all sorts of like aliasing and stuff like that. So it's not like, it's not the best, but I mean, I don't do any super high frequency uh, stuff. 35 megahertz for the most part is, is enough for what I do. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. It's good enough. For, for a little bit, but I, I definitely, I definitely look with jealousy to people I see with these, you know, all these like nice Rigels or analog uh, equipment. All right, so we've got a way to read those two bytes now. So, so our ADC value is going to be um, this dot read, this dot RX read, sixteen. And at that point, um, I guess at that point we just return it, right? Yeah, I don't think we really need to do much more than that. Yeah, that was actually, uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. So let's just uh, see how that looks. Um, I wonder if when you do that, if you have to s actually set the pin up as an input first. I assume not, but um, yeah, we'll see. So uh, let's call it EB for bitbang, new bitbang mode. Uh, we need to pass the device path. Again, let's dev TTY USB 0. Wait, EB got in it. And then let's get a measurement. So actually, in fact, let's um, let's do it like this. Let's have a four while one um, value equals weight dB dot ADC sixteen. 
16, and then we can do delay, delay. I'll just delay for a second. Let's see if that works for now. I didn't log it, so, <laughs> so nothing's going to happen from that. Uh, all right, zero, zero, zero. Cool. Um, let me think about where I can get some voltage from. <laughs> uh, like, I could just plug. I guess I could just like hook the one of the voltage pins up to. Uh, let me just try this. I'm gonna take a, a wire and hook up the like the 3.3 volts from the uh, hook up the 3.3 volts from the the board itself into the into the auxiliary pin, which is where it makes the measurement from, and just see if like see if it reads it. By the way, you can see the little green LED there flashing every time we ask for a measurement. Right, let's see if we get something. So, 3.3 volts and auxiliary. Do we see something? I don't think so. But that could be that there isn't actually voltage on that pin because we're in bitbang mode. Uh, should have had some of this uh, set up ahead of time. Let's see. It works. Let's see if there's actually voltage uh, coming on the 3.3. There is not. Is there anything? There's nothing on 5 volts. Is there any down here? No. There is not. Uh, yeah, okay. Alright, well, let's find it from somewhere else. The problem is going to be that uh, if I hook up another device, I have to like ground them together so that they're. Uh, yeah, but that's fine. Um, yeah, don't have enough uh, devices here for all of this. Alright. See if I can dangle some more USB cables and my tiny, sad little USB port can handle the multitude of devices. <laughs> uh, Alright, so I've plugged in an Arduino. Hopefully, there should be some signal coming out of that. Um, so let's uh, get some wires. Ground those together. Ground and let's just clip that in there. Good enough. And yeah, I guess I can take um, the 3.3 volts from here. I think the bus pirate is uh, 5 volt tolerant. It has 5 volt supply, so I'm pretty sure it is. Um, right, gonna. Something on the ADC pin now. Not seeing anything there. Let's get out of that mode. I'm going to reset the device. One again. Let's try. Oops, sorry, pin. Nope. Oh, <laughs> I was sampling on the wrong pin. <laughs> There's a pin called ADC. So, cool. Alright. So, if I get that, that gives us a 502. That's on 3.3 volts. So that seems about right. Um, certainly not the 4. If I put 5 volts across it, we get a higher value. So, I mean, that looks about right to me. I think that functionality has been added. Okay. Thank you, Arduino. You supplied some some power there. All right. Cool. So that was the um, 
that's like the simple ADC measurement there. And we also have uh, this other, it was a voltage probe. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. And then we have this continuous voltage probe where they where it just sends it as quickly as it's available. And I'm wondering like yeah, it's probably worth it to include that. Um I saw someone ask about observable earlier. I guess this would be a place where like an observable API might actually uh be a useful a useful thing to have. Will this stream be available as a video later? Uh, I guess we'll see. Uh, I'm not really sure. Uh, it depends on how it, how it comes out. I mean, it's certainly not the most... Um, uh, I know it hasn't been the most productive, uh, like, in terms of lines of code. So we've got, yeah, continuous voltage probe measurements which is going to be like 15, I guess, and yeah, so let's look at that. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously, that's not really going to make sense as a, uh, I think that doesn't make too much sense as an API here, right, uh, unless you really turned it into some kind of streaming thing. Um, let's skip it for now, uh, because yeah, you, you really need some sort of more streaming primitive than a, than a promise, and I kind of want to stick with the promises for now. Let's try the PWM. Uh, so to set up pulse with modulation, equations, um, yeah, the, uh, the microchip, this, so the way this, um, the way the boss pirate works, by the way, is really cool. It has, um, like, two main chips on board. It's got one FT, uh, FTDI chip, an FT232, uh, 232L, uh, I think it is. Um, and that's kind of like a, U, uh, a, U, like a USB to serial uh, chip, but it also does a bunch of more stuff than that. And uh, it has this PIC... Uh, PIP 24F, which is a you know a microcontroller, and that kind of does a lot of the hard work and uh, keeps a bunch of memory internally and is able to do all this kind of cool stuff. And it's the reason you get such a simple interface. Uh, da -da -da. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll see. Uh, I'll see about making it available in that case then, uh, uh, Jahar. Um, okay, so. It says that we require five bytes setup. Configure and enable pulse width modulation on the aux pin. Five byte configuration sequence response with one. So we need to send this to kick it off. I get that. Um, equations to calculate the PWM frequency. Oh, okay. So I probably should actually look at that. Just read the rest of what they wrote here. Bit 0 and bit 1 of the first configuration byte set the prescaler value. The next two bytes set the duty cycle register. High 8 bits first. The final two bytes set the period register. High 8 bits first. So everything's big endian. Um, and. Okay, so let's, let's see what they mention here. Output compare. Modes of operation. Um, so what was it? It was talking about uh, the first two bits of the duty cycle register. So let's just duty cycle. Okay, so we get two bits. Um, The simple pulse width modulation mode, um, and control bits, Q0, so there's a 3-bit construction.
I'm just trying to trying to determine like uh, if there's just a simple table in here that we can look at to grab values out of. Probably something like this. Okay, so this is some like C code for configuring the actual chip. Uh, output, output compare. Turn everything off. Output compare one. And initialize it with 26. So it's for comparing 26. Secondary compare. Uh, load new compare. Initialize PR2. That's like such a great comment, right? That's like, here's my line of code that says PR2 equals this value, and then it says initialize PR2 with this thing. Cool, thanks. Man. That says a lot. Uh, yeah. Now, I should have done a little bit of <laughs> looking ahead at this uh, ahead of time because I think this is something where I could. Yeah, I could easily be spending a lot of time. That's just a nice sideways table in the middle. Uh, take a look back and see. So the prescaler, it's going to be basically it's going to be controlling like the main scale of all um, how like uh, wait. So the it's the prescaler value. So the timer, I guess, whatever timer it's using, the next two bytes of the duty cycle, so like how much of the wave is going to be uh, shown, and the final two bits set the period register. So maybe we could just try some stuff, see if we can get it set up. Um, let's make a... Uh, trying to use like enums and everything as much as possible here. Let's make an enum for... Um, uh, what is it? Prescaler? PWM Prescaler. And, uh, yeah. Oh, that looks like, uh, that looks like spam. But I don't have a simple way of getting rid of that at the moment. Uh, Alright, so, I don't know. I'm just going to call them like A, B, I'll change all of this later when I work out what the four values actually are. So we'll have uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, which are all our possible 2-bit values there. Um, so what are we doing here? We're like uh, async um, uh, PWM. I was thinking, you know, a capitalized ABC, so we should capitalize PDM, PWM. Um, so we need a prescaler. A prescaler. We need a uh, duty cycle value. It's one, zero, and one of the first configuration byte set the prescaler value. So we're going to send this byte, then we're going to send one whole byte that represents the prescaler, only using two bits, I think. And then we use two, the next two bytes to use cycle, and then the final two bytes. Okay, so this, this thing is just two bytes representing, um, it's just one byte representing the whole thing, so that's pretty straightforward. So then we're going to have duty cycle, make it a number for now, and uh, what was it? Like compare period? Um, the period register. Period number. Alright, so we're going to send a few bytes here. We're going to send first. Um, 15, that sets it up. No, it wasn't 15. Uh, that was the other thing. This is, what's that? Uh, zero, two, well, 
let's just copy it like this. Uh, eight, four, two, one. So it's one, uh, one, two, it's We send 12, then we send uh, the duty cycle. Um, we have to send it. Oh no, first we send this uh, prescaler. So that's just going to be prescaler. Right, it's already going to be in the bottom two bits, so that's fine. It was bit 0 and bit 1. They're already in the right place. Then we send the duty cycle. Uh, we have to send the high byte first, so we will shift down by 8. And uh, because we don't know if people have given us a higher value, let's just mask that to a byte. Um, then we just want to take the duty cycle part. And uh, yeah, let's put this on. Why don't we put this on different ones? All right. Presumably, this is gonna. Uh, sorry, I just wrote a bunch of. <laughs> I just wrote this code here, which is nothing too special. Uh, <laughs> just writing to the serial port, but I wrote it uh, while you weren't able to see it, so I do apologize for that. Again, complete streaming noob here. Um, so this looks about right. We're sending 12, which is the initiation byte. We send the prescaler. We send the duty cycle as two bytes, and then the period is two bytes. And then, presumably, we're going to get some sort of confirmation back. Usually, it says that here, but I don't see it saying that here now. So what I think I'm going to do just for testing, is to just await a small delay, like I'll wait 100 milliseconds, and then I'm going to console log, um, like, this method that I made, rxpeak, which just shows us, like, whatever is available in the receive buffer at the time. Um, yeah, let's try that out. So let's do, let's stop doing, like, ADC reads, and let's do await bb.pwm we're going to send a prescaler pwm prescaler use a for now um, which will be zero uh, which is probably I guess the slowest ADC or the fastest depending on how it uh, how it works duty cycle um, yeah so the period like, we, if we made it the full period, that's going to be like, uh, like if we made the period FFFF, -F -F -F, and we made the, um, and we made the uh, duty cycle, like, 800, eight zero zero, or, yeah, it was, I think that's the nicer way of doing it, but somehow I feel like that is cooler. Um, uh, yeah, this should be about like a 50% duty cycle, I think. So let's try this out. I'll just to, like, you know, give myself the best fighting chance and actually like hardware reset the board first. Yeah, I expected that. So this this what buffer with a one in it, um, that is what I expected to receive as kind of confirmation that this was happening. Um, but yeah, it's not telling us that that's happening, but that's why I kind of expect it. And now, um, now I need to hook up the oscilloscope, so I'm going to do that quickly. Um, I need a cable that I can grab onto with the oscilloscope hook. So, and I need something to clip the ground on as well. So, auxiliary pin. That's one, and let's get something for the ground as well. No. I really need to organize my wire system, because it's really bad at the moment. It's just a bunch of stuff in a drawer. Of course, that's not what I want. 
I guess I could just clip onto the, the shield of the USB port. That should work. Let's do that. Can I do that? You know, this is just a small thing. <laughs> But you know, like on, on a lot of boards, you will see like on these corners, um, these little holes, they'll usually have like a small metal part around the ring and that will be a ground point. And that's so useful if you need to hook up an oscilloscope probe, because you can just clip onto the corner. Um, this one explicitly stops the ground plane <laughs> before that point and doesn't allow you to get into it. Uh, I'm not going to criticize the maker of this device because it's awesome. Um, I wouldn't have the first clue of de designing something like this, but uh, but yeah, it's just a small uh, useful point. All right, that's a completely the wrong kind of collar cable, but it will do for now. So ground on and signal on. Yeah, you can't see it, but. I assure you, I see a 50% duty cycle uh, <laughs> wave on my uh, on my oscilloscope up there. Yeah, I feel really stupid about not being able to show it to you. <laughs> but there is, it is actually working. Uh, it's, this whole thing is going surprisingly smooth. I want to try this, um, like let's try this, like 25%, so let's like just divide that by two. Um, I'm going to. We don't have. A, I don't have a way of stopping it yet because I haven't built that API. But I'll just hardware reset. Plug it back in. Run the script again. And 25%. Is that? Yeah, it's having trouble like uh, locking on. So it's like uh, auto set. Yeah. Okay, so if I look at this and I do a measurement, I need to do a time measurement, uh, I need AB. Where are the cursors? Uh, line type, none, AB. There we go. All right. Sorry, again, I'm just. Uh, so, like, point to point, um, this is, uh, it's been a while since I've used this, so I apologize. I'm trying to, uh, move the value around. Well, that's the one, yeah. So, it looks like this is about a, this is about 250 hertz. The, the cycle now. So this is the maximum period, 250 hertz, so presumably um, that A mode, where is it? This, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna like rename this now, so I'm gonna unplug this. So it's like, uh, that's gonna be kilohertz uh, 250. And then let's try, let's try B. Let's see what that ends up being. Um, all right, I'll hook that back up. Um, push together B. All right, we've got the one. Oh yeah, I also want to want to account for the one there as well. Oh, okay. So it's actually it's um it gets uh, smaller. So I do auto set now. Yeah. And now this is more like 25 hertz, it looks like. Yeah, so that's about, that's 25 hertz, so power of 10 down. It's not kilohertz either, it's just hertz. Um, hertz. 50, this one's just, yeah, about 25 hertz. So I guess C and D are going to be, uh, yeah, much less. 
I should check the period thing and make sure it really is um, make sure it really is uh, like setting the maximum period and not setting a much smaller period. All right, so if I do that and acquire sets, that's completely messed up. But yeah, that looks about 10 hertz, I think. No, I can't be right. Let's measure that. So this goes to here. Sorry, I realize this must be extremely uh, like that measures out about three hertz. Yeah. I'll double check all of these to make sure that's really the right uh, rescaler. It's a scalar, so uh, I'm probably kind of wrong about that. And then I guess this last one's going to be one hertz. Then. One hertz? Is it a hertz or hertz? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's thrilling, right? Uh, just watching someone adjust an oscilloscope out of uh, out of uh, view. I do, I do acknowledge that. Let's see. My oscilloscope is like, uh, like struggling to even see the, uh, see the waveform here. Maybe it's not working. Oh, you see, by the way, here it's um, it gives this this output of uh, of uh, it detected that it's already in bit bang mode, and basically what that means is it it understands that because it was already kind of in um, in a state where we'd sent these 20 null bytes and we'd done all this acknowledgement and everything, that we didn't have to do that again. There's a little like mechanism you can use just to test, like uh, by sending a certain byte and seeing if you get something back. That's a pretty good indication that you're in the bitbang mode and you don't actually have to um, do something else. So. Yeah, I'm actually not see seeing anything on the oscilloscope. Um, I guess I could try the uh, the multimeter because it has a frequency measurement on it. I don't use this very much because I, I have the oscilloscope, but let's have a look. Uh, so this seems to give a percentage duty cycle, so I'm not even sure if that's going to be useful right now because we know the we know the uh, percentage should be 25% uh, but so you can even find it just doesn't get anything on there which is fair I think it was going to see so I think this last one doesn't seem to do anything at least with these settings No, well, I think, uh, so, yeah, I just, uh, I really enjoy, uh, like, I really enjoy playing with hardware, like, it's the, especially microcontrollers and protocols and everything, because it gives you, like, the, the best of all worlds, right? You, you have a system which is small enough that you can really understand it quite deeply, but, um, uh, but yeah, it's kind of usually has enough depth and, and interesting sort of low-level stuff, and, I love pushing bits around, so uh, yeah, it's, it feels it feels good to push bits around. So um, yeah, that's kind of why I like to play with this kind of stuff. Um, all right, so 
haven't quite figured out the prescaler thing. I need to do some more experiments uh, here, but one thing I do want to fix with this just now is the fact that I know that it's going to send an acknowledge byte. And so let's just, um, you know, basically, uh, I've written that in quite a few places now. And I can probably just copy and paste it out of somewhere. So here, for instance, is one place that I've already written that. So we're going to wait for one byte to come back. It's kind of an acknowledge byte. We, read, we do an Rx read of one byte, pull that zero thing out of the buffer, and check if it's a one. And if it's not, um, then we've got an invalid response when configuring the viewer, let's see. Cool, and probably we should have the thing for turning the PWM off. So async. Uh, let's just call it PWM off. And what do we have to do for that? Let's take a look. Uh, clear or disable PWM. Response with one. You see, it's kind of uh, spotty where it tells us this. So. I think it was 12 before, so this will be 13, and that's that's a really easy one. We just uh, with this one, we're just going to be sending 12. And we're going to be doing the same kind of wait and acknowledge. Yeah. So at that point, we should be able to turn PWM on and off and, uh, and check that out. Yeah, so I'm just going to do one last little test then with this. Um, so for now, since it seemed that this didn't really do anything, oh, it's also dividing around too, let's leave it at 50%. I want to just see what happens if I make this 7FF. And let's make this half of that. Yeah, actually, so let's just shift that down again. Save. And also, just I'll do a set timer, or I do a, I guess I have to delay from here, so I'll do that. After like eight seconds, then I'm gonna turn the PWM off. Make sure that works as well. So let's grab the oscilloscope probe again. seems to just be putting out random noise, so that's that's a good sign. Let's run this. Alright. Um, Alright, channel 2 is interfering with this. Just take that out. Unknown signal on channel one. Oh wait, timed out, waiting for one byte to be available. Okay, so yeah. that's interesting. I'm just kind of confused now because I'm sure it was sending us that we had a byte available in the buffer. Take it out, try again. All right. Yeah, that doesn't seem to be doing much. Did I change from D? I did not. Let's go back to um, 250 hertz. We've reset everything. Right. Got a wave, and that wave is. Oh yeah, it 
turned off. Oh, so that's actually good. It came off for a minute. It was about, I think it was about 150 hertz. And uh, yeah, that makes kind of sense, I guess. Not quite, unless there's some difference. Probably there's some non-linear scaling involved in the, uh, the duty cycle and uh, period calculation that I need to take a look at. I'm going to need to do some data sheet diving there in any case. But um, yeah, I said I would go for an hour. I think I'm going to call it um, kind of, uh, I'm going to call it a day at this point. I really, uh, I really appreciate you guys um, checking in. Uh, I'm just going to take a little look at the, the chat for the last time. Um, It's a nice, uh, nice joke there, Alba. I like that. I was kind of confused for a second. Uh, well, someone asking for homework help. Uh, I don't. Uh, yeah, C CNN scrapers. They're not really my. Um, they're not really my thing. I'll be honest. So, for, <laughs> I guess you have to. You have to find that elsewhere. If you want to know how to write bus, pi bu bus pirate drivers, uh, this would have been the right place, but uh, no. Anyway, yeah, have a great evening, everyone. Thank you for joining me. Um, I might do some more of these at some point, if people like them. It's quite fun. Uh, so, yeah, let me know. And, uh, yeah, 